Uh, well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased that you are here to join us uh, about Bolivia. And thank you very much to Alejandra uh, for agreeing to uh, give us some of her time. Uh, just to give you a little bit of my background, uh, my mother's from Bolivia, so I have family there. So I've grown up and really in, I've been in love with this country for some time. And one of the most frustrating things for me is in the States, the concept of Bolivia that many people have or the perception is very pejorative, unfortunately, it's negative. And a few years ago, well, it wasn't a few years ago, it was 2004, um, we had a former president of NAFSA, the Association of International Educators, visited my study abroad program at the time I was working for them. And she said very, you know, very negatively, it's like, who on earth would want to go to Bolivia? Was her attitude very negative. And I, I corrected her because it, it's, there's a lot of reasons, as Alejandro will show you, why people should go to Bolivia. It, it, there's a beauty and vibrancy there that's just absolutely wonderful. And uh, I, that's one of the goals that we have with Abroad is to promote Bolivia more stateside and, and to, to Europe. You know, I always make a joke that whenever someone says an American, uh, South America, people think of Argentina and Brazil. And it's certainly much more than that. I mean, Brazil, both are beautiful countries, but they're not the only ones there. And so I think we have a, a task before us to really promote, uh, spread the word about Bolivia. And so that's why I've invited Alejandra here to, uh, to speak to us. And Alejandra, again, thank you. And here, I'll, I'll turn over the microphone to you. Thank you so much, Tom. I am so happy to, to hear that people really want to know about Bolivia and they want to come visit. I mean, I am, a, I, I believe myself, a, um, I believe that I am an ambassador for my country. And I will let you know more about my, my experience in a couple of minutes. But um, as you will see, I like, I really like it. I really love it. I'm really sure we have a lot of potential and I'm happy that Robert and Brenda are here to show you a little bit of my country. So I'll start. So my first question was going to be if you know something about Bolivia. I know that you haven't been here, but what do you know about Bolivia? What have you heard? <clears throat> well, I, I would say that um, as opposed to let's say Argentina, I mean, it, it is a country that has um, a large indigenous community mm -hmm. and um, that uh, is, I would, another thing that strikes me about it is it's um, very mountainous, the, 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 the terrain and, and in some of the cities, you know, I would imagine that it would take some um, getting used to the altitude um, mm -hmm. This is what, what I've heard from uh, some people that have been there. Yeah. Great. And Thank you, Robert. Brenda. I, I taught with um, a colleague. Uh, she was a Spanish language instruction, instructor, but was also interested in indigenous languages. I mean, she was herself from Bolivia and uh, returned home uh, to, to family almost every summer. Um, and so my sense of Bolivia from her, from Carol, is that it is a, it is a complicated but beautiful place. Um, and yeah. uh, at one time, the State Department, I think, had warnings about it. Um, but I've long been interested in the possibility of, especially summer programs, um, uh, uh, and the opportunity to allow students to uh, uh, to, to participate in a really good program there. Um, other than that, uh, v really very few negative connotations. Um, so, but that's the extent, I'm quite ignorant. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, you know a lot of things compared to other people, let me tell you, <laughs> you do know. Um, I will let you know. So Bolivia, this is the, as you can see here, this is the, the um, like how we portray to the world, Corazón del Sur, which means heart of the South, because we are like literally at the heart of the South. But I'm gonna show you first a video. I don't know what is your Spanish level, but the subtitles of this video were so bad that I decided not to put it. But it doesn't matter if you don't understand mm -hmm. the, because you're gonna see, and that will be more than enough. It's like a first one. I have a couple of videos, but this is the first one. Let me show you. Y el latido del corazón y me dejé llevar. Viví experiencia. 
Sorry. It is. Días inolvidables. Well, that was a little bit of Bolivia, as you can see, like a very few moments, I'm up a minute and a half and a little bit more, but I'm going to show you a little bit more. Wait, give me a second. Okay. So why are we the heart of the South? Because we are literally the heart of the South. I think not letting me. Okay. Now, that is South America and that is Bolivia, right? So as you can see, we get, we are literally at the middle of, of, of it, which make us a big, um, we make a great place to be because we're, we have uh, Brazil next to us, but we also have Argentina. We have Chile, we have Peru, right? We have Paraguay, you're gonna see it right now. Look, this is Brazil here where you were, Brenda. Argentina, wait, Argentina is down here where you were, Roberto. Mm -hmm. Chile, Peru, and Paraguay. So we have a lot of, uh, countries surrounded Bolivia, uh, which also makes us a landlocked country. So we don't have access, like direct access to the sea, as you can as you can see. Um, so the closest access we have is Peru and Chile, um, but which has been, uh, I have to say, like a, um, like something that didn't put us in advantage compared to other countries, right? But I have to say that is at the end of the, if you see everything that Bolivia has. Uh, you can forget that we don't have access to the sea because all of the other wonderful things we have. I remember Roberto mentioned something about mountains in Bolivia, and that's true. But then you can see now in the picture that actually the mountains part is just this part, you know, the, the, the brown part. The rest of Bolivia is actually Amazon and Bali. And that's where, what most people don't know. Right? Like they don't really know. This idea of Bolivia is a very... Andean, uh, uh, from the Andes, right? From the mm -hmm. front of the Andes mountains idea, which is great, which is amazing because I'm from that part. I am from La Paz, uh, you can see here La Paz. And this is the, uh, the Andes go coming through and you can see the Altiplano, which is very high up, like really, really high up. We are like over 10,000 feet and the high up. I remember when I was, uh, one day I was arriving to Miami and I saw the altitude and it was the same altitude as we live in, Bolivia, in La Paz. I was like, oh my God, I live at this altitude and we were in, like in the air, in the airplane. Um, <laughs> that's the first time I really realized it was like so high up. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> we really were very high. Um, but yeah, this is it. So I wanted to show you a little bit more because all of this part of the north of Bolivia is Amazon, like really, really Amazon. All on the video, you saw like the, these animals and like this, the forest and all the jungle and all the stuff. This is here. Like it really, it is there. And then you have, you saw in the video this white thing that maybe you know what it is, maybe you don't. I'm going to tell you a little bit later. But it's Salar de Uni, is around here, the white thing you can see here, it's, uh, salt flux. Mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, the biggest salt flux in the, in the world, amazing place. But you also have here, like more of a Bali, right? Like a Bali um, part of Bolivia, which, which is not the Amazon, but it's not the Andes either. Right, so we do have a lot of diversity. We have a lot of different eco regions, which make us uh, an a great country to visit because you can have everything not really far, far away. You know, like a couple of hours, maybe 
five, six, seven hours stop, and you can have a different, totally different change of scenery, which make, which makes uh, makes it a great place to visit. Um, just to show a little bit more about this um, image we have on our logo, it, it shows the different parts, as I was telling you, the Amazon part, the Andes part, the Bali part, and the Altiplano, which is, I don't know if Altiplano has a word in English. I don't think so. It just means like it's high and it's plain. Alto, plano, by like high and plain. <laughs> it says that it's very high up in altitude and plain as well. So uh, those are the four kind of parts that Bolivia has. And uh, it's really important, I believe, to, to portray this to the world because yes, we are an, an Andes, Andean country, but we are more, way more than that. And I can tell you a lot of facts, but you can also find them in, in Wikipedia or like other places. So I'm just gonna tell you some such um, some interesting facts that we actually actually have uh, 36 etnias which are recognized in Bolivia. So it's 35 and and uh, well, so the languages will be 35 from the from the etnias and one which will be Spanish, right? So it's not only Spanish as, as a lot of people think. Uh, sadly, a lot of people do not speak the other languages. As I must say, the Sp Spanish is the most spoken one, but there are 35 others. I know some words of some, some of them, like Aymara, Quechua, Guarani, but there are so many others that I know them, but I have never even seen, seen them, like the, the etnias. They are very hidden, very, very, very uh, um, well-preserved, I'm gonna say. And also uh, this makes the, the country really authentic. And that, those are the words of people that have visited Bolivia. And I will always ask, so what are your thoughts? And the word that will come out to their minds will be uh, authentic. And I, I really want to leave that word with you as, as we go up, out uh, throughout the, the presentation. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my experience being Bolivian outside. So this is the thing. Bolivia? What is that? So I myself uh, was born and raised in La Paz. This is my picture in like a very sightseeing place, very nice sightseeing place. So you can see La Paz behind me. Uh, so I was born here, raised here. I only been to Peru and Chile before leaving for a, for a longer time. Um, so very much the only thing I knew was Bolivia and Bolivians, right? That was my reality 23 years. When I was 24, I left Bolivia to go to the United States. And that's when, when I'm telling you the story about Miami, that was my first time like really traveling very, very far away, like by plane outside my country actually. And it was a very long, long trip, but then I arrived to the United States because I was as well, Brenda, a Fulbright scholar in Washington DC, representing Bolivia, you know, it, it works the other way. We from other countries go to the United States to represent our countries there. So I did a master's in, G in the George Washington University, GW, Washington, D.C. And uh, well, I have to say that I was wearing, that was the day of my graduation, and I was wearing this Bolivian flag because there were so, so few of us. So as you may know, the D.C. area, kind of Virginia, Maryland, is very uh, famous, or no, not famous, it's very popular for Bolivians, to immigrants to go. So I was not the only Bolivian in the area. Yes, of course, I was not. But in the university, it was only three or three of us. So it was kind of weird. People will really ask me, what is Bolivia? Like, where is Bolivia? What is this? They will ask me if I speak Portuguese, if I speak Russian. I will be like, what? <laughs> I'm not lying to you. Um, they thought Bolivia was kind of part of Brazil or it was kind of Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, you know, those countries as well. So people wouldn't really know that that's why when I tell you, Roberto Brenda, that you actually know, is because you actually know. <laughs> and some people will not have any any idea of what Bolivia was. And I didn't really know that. I mean, I kind of imagined, but I didn't really know until I was there. When I joined the Fulbright program, um, this is a picture we took at the beginning, kind of, and it was 70 different countries in that picture, 70. It was a lot of different countries. And I was, of course, the only Bolivian. And like people didn't really know. I had a lot of, of South American fellows over there, of course, but even they uh, haven't been to Bolivia yet. I hope they can visit, uh, but they, they, they didn't. I mean, they knew a couple of things. When you ask them, is this thing, right? Llamas and altitude and monolithos, if you even know what monolithos are like that, those were the things that will tell me. 
some some guys will tell me about football, you know, being like, oh, playing soccer is very hard in Bolivia because of the altitude. Okay, at least something. But those were the comments. Pretty much those were the comments. So I had to step up and be like, okay, I have to be an ambassador of my country. Like I have to show them what Bolivia is because otherwise like, nobody is gonna really know. So I actually became Bolivia. I was not Alejandra anymore. <laughs> Alejandra was not my name, honestly. My name was Bolivia because for most of them, I was the only Bolivian they knew and they probably ever gonna meet because some of my fellows were from Madagascar or were from, I don't know, um, you know, really Uzbekistan, like the real one, <laughs> or Iran, you know, and they're, they're like, there is no Bolivians over there. Like you either go to Bolivia to know more about it because we don't receive Bolivian tourists, tourism, right? So I was there representing my country. And then later I started realizing that I have I had to be the only Bolivian. I'm sure you, when you hear some pictures of the groups of people I've been working with during the last years. I, so I had the pleasure after the US to live also in Costa Rica and Spain and China. Uh, but also I traveled a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. I didn't want to put on my traveling pictures just because it was too much. <laughs> so I just I just chose one there like in Puerto Rico to show that I was having fun. But all during all of those activities and trips and, and studying and everything, I was the only Bolivian, like the only one. Like this, this picture here is in Costa Rica. We had like a training because I was working for a US company in Costa Rica, only Bolivia. This is my Fulbright fellows, like my the closest uh, friends, Uruguay, Panama, Argentina, Ecuador, it was the only Bolivian. This is a company I worked with in Spain. Of course, it was 20, 24 people, 20 different nationalities. Of course, the only Bolivian, right? You know, it was, it was a weird thing. It was the only one. And I had to always represent my country, be like, this is, what we are, and also this is the thing, my, my country Bolivia is so diverse that I only represent one part of the country, right? I represent La Paz kind of, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't look like, and I, I don't speak like a people, person from Santa Cruz or from Tarija. It's very different, very, very different. So I had to be very careful in what I will say about Bolivia because I have to represent in a, in a good way. Also traveling, I had the, the chance to meet over, like to visit over, I don't know, I'm not sure yet, but I think it was 28 countries. Um, and most of them, I will go to the hostel. I remember in Canada, for example, I will go to the hostel and they have reading in the walls, the names of uh, on, on the flags of the countries. And like Bol Bolivia was not there, so I was the first one. And that happened, the same thing happened in Malaysia or in Singapore, for example, same thing. I was the only one. And for me, it, ha it was a lot of pressure because, you know, this is the idea of you're going to have a, of a Bolivian, but at the same time, um, a lot of um, excitement, right? To know that there is so much space for us over there, right? So much space for things we can do, so much space for things we can um, share about our culture and everything. And um, it's great. And then I started meeting some other people in some other places that they actually came to Bolivia and they will be like, oh yes, I went to Bolivia. And they will be so happy and they will tell me this authentic part as i told you but um, they will only come to certain like a specific part of bolivia like a couple of cities a couple of places and then they will jump either to, to chile or to argentina or any of the other countries we are surrounded by right um so i'm going to show you what these people that come to bolivia actually see it's amazing anyway but it's just one part but okay are you ready this is a little longer, longer, but it's very nice.
What do you think? Now I feel like I have to have some locro and empanadas or something. <laughs> uh, definitely. Um, so beautiful. So, very beautiful. No, very beautiful. Thank very you. beautiful. Thank what you. What you have seen about Bolivia in the last video is what people usually do when they come. They come to La Paz, which is great, amazing. Welcome, please come. Uh, they go to Salar de Uni, which is an amazing, amazing place. You haven't it, in the in the video. It was like a it was like a dry season. But when it's a rainy season, you can actually see the mirror effect with everything reflects. And it seems like this, I don't know. I went there and I was like, what is this? Is this even from this world? Like what, <laughs> uh, really? And that's in Potosí. But then you also go to Coroico when the death road. I actually did the death road by bike. You, you do it by bike when you come here. And you can mm -hmm. do it also in the van, but it's, it's way better in the bike. <laughs> it's just way more interesting. And they go to Copacabana as well, as you have, as you have seen Lake Titicaca and everything. And then they go, they leave. People leave. And then you see in the screen, all of the other places they don't go. This is the rest of Bolivia. This is Tarija and the winery. This is Oruro and the carnival. I don't know if you heard about Carnival of Oruro. This is Cochabamba yes. and the Cristo de la Concordia, but also it's food, Cochabamba and the food. This is Rura Navaque, which the Amazon's, Amazon forest and the pink dolphins. This is Santa Cruz, the biggest and the fastest growing economy in Bolivia. And this is Sucre, which is the Bolivia's capital, actually, because a lot of people think La Paz is the capital, but it's not. Sucre is the capital, the one down here. So this is the rest of the country. Imagine, I mean, I'm happy to know that we are actually have something to show and people at least come because years ago, I remember people will tell me uh, that they would, they came to South America, South America, but they jumped Bolivia. So they didn't come to Bolivia they, because they didn't really know what was there or they thought it was very, very um, dangerous but they didn't know anybody who will guide them or anything. You know, so they jumped it. At least now people are coming to see the Juni, the South the Juni Plus, because that became the, a big, a big um, a place to visit in the last years. And they come to Bolivia because of the cable car to La Paz, sorry. So um, it became a thing, right? It really became a thing to to visit Bolivia because of that. But as I'm telling you, they people come, visit those three, four places and they, they leave. So they, the average time they spend in Bolivia is a week. Sometimes, sometimes it's less. And it's like, what can you actually do in Bolivia in like four or five days? It's not enough. I mean, I don't think it's enough in any country, honestly. But here, I honestly, honestly, it's not enough. I mean, you can see the pictures, look at how different everything looks. It is very different. So I think that we are this hidden gem, like this hidden space like in the middle of South America that people are, didn't just discover yet, but we're gonna be discovered. And like, people are gonna love it. So this is the beginning, right? This is the beginning of, of, uh, of what can we do? And that's when I go to this place now, so now in Bolivia. So when I was in the United States studying over there, as I'm telling you, I was the only Bolivian and I had another Fulbright fellows uh, from Bolivia in different states. And uh, we realized like, there's so many Brazilians, so many Argentinians, so many uh, Mexicans, so many of them. And like, where are the Bolivians? And we thought Bolivians were not there because there were not enough scholarships for us. That's what we thought. But then we realized that scholarships were there, but just Bolivians were not taking the scholarships. So that's what we start, That's why we started to Beca Bolivia. That's an organization of um, scholars like me, like myself, that we studied abroad with a scholarship. Uh, we want to show Bolivia that there are uh, options available because we realize that in order to make Bolivia present out there, it's not enough with me being an ambassador. We need way more people, right? Showing these videos and showing this stuff. And I'm always with my Instagram, we like, do you know this place? Do you know this place? I mean, I'm a real ambassador, <laughs> honestly. Um, and we know we need more people like that. So we are a, a group of a lot of, a lot of uh, Bolivians who did, a, sorry, so who did wonderful things over there. So this is just a couple of them um, because we are almost like 150 part of the organization, but it is a couple of us that you can see, uh, Gabriela that was in Switzerland, Eric that's in Japan, in Japan, sorry. Um, I don't know, Madeleine that was in Taiwan and you see Paola that was in, in the UK, Michelle that's in Spain and you see everybody that were in different, 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 different places. And all of us that we we are Bolivians, oh, we are studying abroad, we studied abroad, we became ambassadors, right? So it's very, very interesting to 
know that uh, like your friend has vacation and she's asking you, can I go to Bolivia? Oh my God, it's amazing. I was, I was supposed to receive a lot of friends this year, but pandemic came and like, you know, you know what happened. I was not able to do it, but I was supposed to receive a lot of friends because that's why uh, I became right an ambassador. But also we realized something. Uh, when I was studying in, in, in GW, I, was, I would be so excited to meet people from other cultures, right? People from India, people from China, people from, you know, uh, I don't know, Hungary. And I will always say in Bolivia, everybody's Bolivian, right? So all your friends, your classmates were Bolivian, all your cousins are Bolivian, Every, everyone is Bolivian. Maybe you know someone, some, I don't know, someone who's from Brazil or someone who's from the US, someone, right? My, weird cases, but everybody's from Bolivia. And I think that when you go outside and you actually study abroad and you when you meet all of these people and you meet all of these different lifestyles and different ways of doing things, your, your mind really grows, like your life really grows. And you actually understand like, Everything is different and things we do in Bolivia can be really nice and interesting, but they're not the only way, right? There are many, many different ways of doing things. And I think one of the, one of the reasons why we, we are growing up, but we are not growing up so fast is because we don't have this. You know? Everybody here thinks the way we do things in here is the only thing, the only way. But we need to expand this. So by sending the students, I mean, we don't send them. With Tobacco Bolivia, we only give them information and we mentor them. We don't give scholarships, right? That's a misunderstanding all the time. Well, we, we help them find the scholarships kind of thing. But anyways, we're, we're helping students, right? These, these young Bolivians who want to meet the world and see the world, we, we actually are part of that. And we are so happy because we need that. We need more people who are really understand the world. And not only from Bolivia, from everywhere, right? To, to know how, how different it is in every, everywhere or how, how similar it is at the same time. Very similar and very different, both things. But this tolerance, this empathy that gives you traveling and studying abroad is, is not comparable to anything else. You just have to do it. Because I can be here talking to you about it, but it's not the same until you do it. And that's why uh, with Tubeca Bolivia, we're so eager to keep helping this and keep promoting this international and international studying uh, among Bolivian young people, because it's not a real thing, it's not a reality. And as you can imagine, the other way around is not a, it's not a thing either. We don't have international students here. Well, I mean, we have like four or five <laughs> and that's all. Like, honestly, <laughs> um, that's why I'm so happy to be partnering with Abrodia now to be part of this and to try to, um, to create this space to, to bring more international students here because that's another way to expand our minds, right? I mean, one thing you go outside, but that takes time, <clears throat> that takes money. And that takes a lot. But when some international people come, you can actually get this, this international exposure without even leaving, right? Even if you host them in your house, even if you talk to them, you take classes with them, you, you exchange you know, languages with everything, you, you are part of that. And that's something I have never had when I was a student, nothing. Like I didn't even imagine that was possible. Like when I went to the US and I saw how the amount of international students over there, I was like, wow. This really changes education. I mean, education could be the same, like the content, but you know, the experience of having people from other countries in your class discussing about the different ideas. And that's what happened to me in my master's degree. I, I, I was studying in GW, as I, tell you, as I told you, uh, and it was a couple of us <clears throat> from South America, and there was a couple of people from China and another girl from Africa. And that made us such an international context for our master is that the experience that we had, it was such different. And I imagine myself being like, if I had had this opportunity back in Bolivia, all of us would, would have been Bolivian. And maybe the content would have been the same, but the experience wouldn't have been the same. And then I realized how important it is for people to have these experiences, not only to live outside, but also, also to meet people from other people, from other cultures in yours. So you can empower yourself with your culture, right? So you can be proud and show them and teach them and show them how to eat salteñas or how to eat, you know, a choclo or all these <laughs> things. I haven't even talked about food, imagine. <laughs> that's another topic. Um, so that's how I realized how important this is and how, how much we need as a country, but also as a world. 
to keep promoting this international exchange for students because honestly, I also realized in my professional experience that young people are the key, you know, because they are the ones that, that, that have the drive, the motor of companies, of uh, entrepreneurships, of institutions, of social media, everything. Young people are everywhere. That's why we need more open-minded, uh, international uh, young people. And that's why this is very important to me. I know you heard about a lot about Bolivia in a couple of minutes, in the last minute, sorry, uh, but I'm gonna show you one last video. Uh, I think it's gonna close the deal. <laughs> Busca That's una herramienta de gestión de tareas eficiente Is para unir a su equipo. Pruebe Bitrix24. Bitrix24 es líder oh, entre sistemas de gestión de proyectos. Okay. That's all. Thank you so much. Hello, Jennifer. Hi. Thank you for coming. Sorry, I came so late. I had another meeting. <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you so much. It's beautiful. I want to go to Bolivia now. <laughs> oh my God! I really hope you can come. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer. We uh, we are recording this, so I uh, I'll be oh, sending thank you. you if you give me your your email address at the end. I don't know if you registered or not. Send I, me did regist I did register. I did register. Okay, actually. then I have. Yeah. We'll send this recording to you, uh, certainly, um, so, so you can have it, you know. And thank you know, so much. Know about Bolivia. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, so I'm Jennifer is, is the professor I'm, I'm working with, the COIL program. Oh, you are. You're, you're at Stonehill. No, yeah. I know Stonehill no, very well. Right. I used to teach at, uh, I used to be the director of study abroad at Emmanuel College. Oh, my gosh. I, oh, my. Yeah. I know Stonehill <laughs> very well. It's a good place. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, but uh, so do you, do you have any questions for Alejandra? Or any comments about Bolivia, I'm welcome. <laughs> I look forward to working with you, Alejandra, and with uh, Jennifer as well. I'm the coil coach in the. Right. Oh, you're with. Uh, oh, the project you're that Brenda, you're right. I'm that Brenda, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you're with Outbound International. Okay. Okay. Nice. Good. Good. Well, uh, I, I'm just going to do a little, uh, little PR here for Bolivia and for Alejandra. We are organizing a familiarization visit to Bolivia in uh, July 2022, uh, because we really don't know what's going to happen in 2021. Yeah. So I think it's better to err on the side of caution. Uh, but we'll, we'll send you the information uh, in, in 2022. And also, uh, Roberto, Brenda, uh, Jennifer, I don't know if you'd be interested in, in, in uh, hosting a Bolivian student. We're trying to find universities and colleges in the US who would be interested in, in, in engaging like in a direct exchange to have a student for a semester uh, you know, from, from Bolivia. And so basically uh, your student, let's say from Stonehill College, would like to go to La Paz for a semester at, at, at the university where Alejandro teaches. 
Mm -hmm. uh, your student would pay the Stonehill tuition. The Bolivian student would pay their tuition. And of course, they change places. Right. And then they each pay their, pay their respective lodging, you know, the housing, wherever they're at. So uh, that is something for us that's really important because we want, uh, you know, as Alejandra said, we want more people to know about Bolivia and to, be, uh, to encounter it, learn about it, and certainly visit it. You know, I, I've always told people really to understand and appreciate Bolivia, you have to visit there in person. Yes. Yes, you have to come, you have to eat the food, you have to talk to people, you have to see all of those places I show you video. I have to see them. I even don't believe that when I go there, I'm like, is this even real? I don't know. <laughs> so I, I really encourage you. Um, this familiarization trip we're gonna have, I mean, if everything goes well, but we don't know, maybe it will be possible to do it in 2021, right? Maybe, maybe. We hope. wish. Let's but, hope. <laughs> but it's gonna happen at, at some point and I will be happy to host you here and to show you places. Yeah. Of course, we may not be able to go to the Amazon jungle because it's kind of far, not that far away, but timing right. wouldn't work. But I will definitely take you to Salar de Uni, to Coroico, <laughs> yes. to Copacabana. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can see all of these places that you saw on video, be like in real life. And um, as I told you, I think we have a lot of potential. We have a lot of things to be shown, a, a lot of places to be, uh, visible to the world but and then this is the beginning right this is part of my i don't work at the tourism agency although i would like to <laughs> it's not my area but this is my way of promoting my country i think education is a, is a great way to do it and hopefully we can we can start soon may i ask a question about the uh, you say about hosting bolivian students would they come did you say they'd come a full academic year or or, or a semester uh, I, we were thinking a, a, a semester. Uh, we, we would work with the universities because my experience, you know, I, I used to place international students on campuses in the U.S. was usually just for a semester because uh, you know, I think most colleges and universities don't want to forego a whole tuition's worth of semester. I mean, a whole year's worth of tuition. Um, well, what, what, what semester would it be? I mean, I'm not sure how the academic year works in Bolivia. I, I, I think it would, well, I'll let Alejandra, uh, Alejandra can take that. Kind of similar, right, Jennifer? We were looking at it. <laughs> I mean, we have different, we have different timing, definitely. But um, kind of semester one, we don't call it spring or winter. Especially in La Paz, we don't have that difference. I don't know if I yeah, told yeah. you, we don't have this the seasons. So when I lived in the U.S., it was the first time for me to see like, wow, this is winter, <laughs> this is fall. <laughs> we don't have it here. It's every every all year long is pretty much the same. So we don't have in the entire countries like that we don't have it so we don't have fall semester winter semester it doesn't exist it's semester one semester two so semester one 2020 to semester two 2020 semester one goes from like february to june kind of and okay. the other one goes from august to november december depending on oh, okay stuff. okay so, so so it's not that different it's not that yeah. different no. yeah And, and of course, it would be great sorry, to, to host a U.S. students here as well. That would be amazing, too. Mm -hmm. and, and did you say that the, um, the student would be expected to pay like room and board costs? Is that what the out of uh, pocket? Okay. Or, or is there any kind of special scholarship for that? You mean for the well, Bolivian student going to the yeah. U.S. or the U.S. student right. going? Um, no, for the Bolivian student. We would have we would have to see. Uh, we're, we're looking for some scholarships or other other funding opportunities for them. But I mean, the big obstacle obviously is the tuition because that's it's it's a very high tuition no matter which college or university in the states we're working with. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the, the idea is they would come back with an official transcript of um, yes their courses and and would they, would their university be able to accept those as transfer credit or, or or not i think that would be well, a question in in the you mean in the u.s in the u.s they they should i mean let's take for example um the business courses at at, at the university where alejandro teaches they're all aacsb accredited so the, no, 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 the no, I, don't, I don't doubt that I, I'm, I'm doubting the other way like if the bolivian student would be going to their university if they would be able to apply that credit to their studies. Oh, back home in Bolivia. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I don't see why not. 
really. Yeah, I, I see the, the only um, maybe reason why it will be hard, it will be the, the, the kind of, uh, the amount of hours. But I'm pretty sure that will be uh, talked. I mean, we can walk through that. The university is very willing to send students. They really want, um, I work at the Universidad Privada Boliviana here in La Paz, but we also have campuses in Cochabamba and Santa Cruz. Um, I'm, we are really open to receive students and to send students. So okay. I really think we can make it work. Oh, great. Okay, it's good to hear. Yeah, the, the, th the thing is, it's, I, I think it's, it's five Bolivian credits are equivalent to two US credits, two semester US credits. So that's something to keep in mind as well when we're doing this, but I, I don't think there would be a problem as Alejandra said, you know, they, they want uh, Bolivian students to have that experience. So I think they'd be very supportive of this. I mean, we send some students, but as I'm telling you, like maybe two or three, two, three years, you know, like it's not a big amount. And we, I think we have never received an international students in the campus in La Paz, at least. Right. So, so yes. So this COIL experience I'm gonna have with Jennifer is gonna be a great uh, start point, right? Yeah. To see yeah. how, how we, even even though it's gonna be virtual, but anyways, yeah. I think it's gonna be great for students to have classes together and to work on projects together. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That, that's the name of the game until we have a vaccine and people can actually return yeah. to travel again. Right, right. right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I, I hope you do consider all of all of you consider visiting yeah. Bolivia. You know, um, yeah. it, it like I said, it's, it's a wonderful place, and you can see Alejandra where she teaches at her university, La Paz, which is beautiful. Uh, and certainly, you have to try at least uh, a few salteñas. Uh, oh my God! Yes, <laughs> they're like empanadas, Roberto, yes. but <laughs> Bolivian good. empanadas. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're really good. <laughs> I, I see. I have seen that uh, Brenda wrote, like the chat. Yeah. Oh no worries. It's all yeah. been. Um, my my question was answered and very well. Um, the students I work with tend to uh, not want touristic experiences. Um, right. Very often they're going to be thinking about um, how to connect and then um, with with local populations, local students and also how to address complex global issues of various sorts. So, uh, you know, the, the SIT model is, right. is, is really, it's a good match for the students. Um, so it sounds like uh, this program as well is going to have those components and that's fantastic. Uh, yes, I, I, I just wanna answer a little bit more. You know, Alejandra has been wonderful in helping us identify uh, some volunteering opportunities, but let me tell you a little bit more about Abroadia. I used to work with Brethren Colleges Abroad, BCA Study Abroad, which had a, a strong emphasis of peace and justice in all of its programming. In that sense, it is similar to SIT. Unfortunately, yes, I uh, know BCA, those programs. Yes, yes. unfortunately, BCA no, is no longer around, but I still have their values. So for us, um, we want Americans to go to Bolivia to meet Bolivians, not other Americans. That makes no sense, right? Um, I always like telling the story when I was resident director in Cuba for a program, I heard a student from another program say, um, I can't believe Tom is forcing his students to speak Spanish all day, you know, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then I finally I ran to the girl and said, you know, well, why, why are you speaking English here all the time? She said, and she said, I won't mention this provider, but she said, we came here to study the culture, not the language. Like, well, no, both <laughs> go hand in hand. Oh my God. You can't have one without the other. Oh, Lord. <laughs> another one, again, I won't, this was another program. I won't say their name. And I heard another girl complaining about me, you know, always forcing my students to speak Spanish 24 seven. And she said, uh, I, I, I could never do that. I, I speak Spanish at the University of Havana and that's enough. So <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Brenda, you know, Roberto, Jennifer, Alejandro, that, that's where I come from is I, I really believe in the immersive element where you do meet, kind of make connections with the people. That's why I don't want students staying in a hotel. Um, I'm not, a fan, I won't criticize semester at sea, but I don't like that kind of uh, program. It's just not a very good model to really get to know people well. Uh, the, in the internships, these, these, these type of uh, encounters are, are extremely important. You know, so I, uh, I, I'm a big believer in that. And, and that's, that's where Alejandra and I work so closely, so well together, because he, she believes in that too. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that's great as well. That's, that's something I believe is very important, right? It wouldn't make sense 
I, that's something that happened, for example, when I went to the US, a lot of people uh, told me you have to look for a, a Latina roommate, right? So someone from Latin America who's gonna be your roommate. And I was like, why? Mm -hmm. And they were telling me because you're gonna be able to speak Spanish and the culture is the same. And actually I was like, yeah, I think that's gonna be easy. However, I have not the chance to choose, honestly, as I'm telling you, 5% of the population at GW are Latinos. And that's not, a, that's, not a, that's not a lot, right? So I couldn't choose. So I had to just like, the only, the only room available, I had to take it. And my roommate, well, she was from Bangladesh actually, but she, was, she grew up in New York. So I actually had two different cultures there because she was bicultural. And it was amazing. She taught me so much about her, her, her culture like in Bangladesh, but also in the US, you know, all this slang and all those things, like things you don't know when you go somewhere. And it's, it may seem mm -hmm. obvious, but it's not. You know, I remember just this arriving on time. It's not a thing for us, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not really a thing that I really try to do it, but it's not really that people really show up on time. And I remember my roommate be pulling me, be like, we have to go on time. We have to go on time because the event is going to start. And we're like, I don't think they're going to start if we are not there. No, they are going to start. And they did, right? <laughs> so, uh, she, will, she was forcing me to look, not forcing me, but like she was teaching me how to adapt yeah. better. And that made entire difference because I look back and I said, if I had part, uh, been roommates with a Peruvian, let's say, or like another Bolivian or whatever, we would have been in our bubble, just talking to each other, just eating our food, you know? And I wouldn't have opened myself the way I did when I was roommate with her. So I really think it's super important as well. Fulbright, is, you know, Brenda, the Fulbright um, gives you a lot of, um, uh, exchange, intercultural exchange yes, and trips and everything. Absolutely. So that's also why I come from, right? Uh, this idea of the, the, this real exchange is not only academic or it's not only for your CV. Being like, oh yes, I went to Bolivia, whatever. It's like a real exchange and that's the only way. That's what actually Paul, William Fulper said, right? That yes. the real, we're going to build a better, better world, uh, yeah, world, this world by exchanging with, with this exchange, with the real exchange, with people's exchange. Great. Uh, one more, one other thing I'd like, just like to mention: uh, if you're ever interested in hosting a, a professor from from the from the university where Alejandro teaches, that's something we're also very interested in promoting. Similarly, if you have a professor who'd like to spend a semester in Bolivia at the university, we can do that too. Uh, so it's just a, a different ways of thinking of how to involve your faculty, not just your students. Uh, and becoming acquainted with, with, with Bolivia. Wonderful. Uh, Tom, I've put my new email yes. in, in the chat. Yeah. Um, and I'll be in transition. It's uh, We're doing, because I love where I am, but um, this is a wonderful new experience in a bigger university. And so I'm very excited about that. Great. But um, I'm going to be uh, the Associate Director of a Center for Undergraduate Scholar Engagement. And good, so, so what I'm doing now is a part of what I will be doing, but the scope is much larger. Um, and I would love to brainstorm with you at another point. Uh, you contact us anytime. We would love to okay. talk with you anytime. Fantastic. Thank you. And, and same thing with you, Jennifer and, and Roberto. Uh, it, it would be great. I think it's, it's, it would be a lot of fun to do. Um, yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. So please yeah, keep in touch and we'll you know, I'd like to look at more information and, and see. I mean, right now I would normally be working on hosting oh. some students, but <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know when the next time will be, maybe next fall, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably yeah. Soon. yeah. yeah. But I, I certainly would enjoy talking about it and exploring it further so we can plan ahead. No, we, we will definitely. Like I said, just keep keep the dates. Uh, uh, summer 2022, about July 2022. We mm -hmm. haven't set the dates yet, uh, but it's going to be like between seven and ten day trip because you have to keep in mind you need a whole day to recover from the altitude once you arrive in La Paz. Yeah, I imagine. You do <laughs> need. But it, it 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 is worth it, and you can see the faculty. I mean, for me. Uh, it, it, it's about f facilitation and getting people to know Bolivia. I don't want you to think, oh man, that Tom is so possessive. Like, no, if you decide mm -hmm. to have your, form your own res research relationship with the university there in Bolivia, great. 
that's what we want. We want these connections between universities in the US and in Bolivia. Uh, and, and, and again, just going back to this peace and justice issue that, that we have, I inherited from my VCA days, is we, we'd be looking at, at Salar Uyuni and the lithium and the politics involving the United States, of course, you know, mm, you know mm -hmm. uh, why are they suddenly friendly now with Bolivia? Well, Salar Uyuni. And of course, mm -hmm. we know we, we, we do this in Cuba with the, the embargo and the politics. A lot mm -hmm. of people in the United States forgot that uh, despite the Obama detente, the embargo was still in place uh, mm -hmm. and that never left. People were just able to travel a little more often, but the embargo yeah. was still in place. So it's not just, it, it's Bolivia and Cuba, a lot, a lot of people just don't know really well uh, about these countries. So I'll, I'll stop, I'm, I'm talking too much. I think Alejandra, let me, I mean, you're the star of the show. So let me, let me give this back to you. Do you have any, any other thoughts? Thank you, Tom, Dola. I think that's very important. And I just sent the link of the university I work, Universidad Privada Boliviana, UPB, if you want to call it. Um, I send it, I don't know, I'm pretty sure they should have an English version, I'm not really sure though. But you can see there the different campuses we have. I work in La Paz campus, as I said before, um, but you can check it out. It's, I mean, not to brag or anything, but it's honestly the best private university in Bolivia. Um, uh, so it will be amazing. I think it's a great chance for, for the, to, to create this exchange for your students, for my students, for students in general. Um, so thank you so much for your interest in Bolivia. It's, as I'm telling you, it's a hidden gem. So you can find it, you can discover and you can help your students discover it as well. Okay. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Jennifer. And I hope we can, I, I hope to see you in the familiarization trip if that's possible, uh, because I will be receiving people here. So it will be my pleasure. Um, if not, and you come here because of vacation or because of another agreement, whatever, just please feel free to contact me. I'm going to put my email as well. So if anything, you can contact me. And yes, I don't know if you have any other questions, comments. Not for me, not for the moment. I actually have to go into um, another meeting, but, um, but I really appreciate your time and, and sharing this information. It's very, very interesting. I'm copying your email, Alejandra. Yes. And, um, and, and let's, yeah, let's stay in touch. I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to hear more about the project as it develops. Great, amazing. Thank you so much. All right, bye. Thank you, Roberto, nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you, Tom. Bye. Thank you, Alejandra. Yeah. Goodbye. Thank you, Roberto, take care. Thank you, bye. And I think, uh, well, I think that'll be it. Uh, Jennifer, thank Brenda, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And I was just thinking um, in uh, about two years, we're going to do some short-term travel trips as part of a, a class for Women Global Issues. And I, um, my partner and I, Monique Myers, who teaches intercultural communication, will be, yeah, we're looking for a place. So this might be the place. So Yay. yeah, we, yes, we, yes. We'd love, we love to have you. Love to have That'd be great. And we would do it like, you know, every year in spring and bring a group of students and it would be great. That would be amazing. We can yeah. plan a very like um, consistent project. And yeah, yeah they could have like interactions. It'd be great, actually. Yes, yes, yes. yes. And we're going to start Jennifer, yeah. right now, like next spring yeah. to see how yeah. the, the yeah. relationship between students develops. But yeah. I, think, I think we can create something great. Yeah, we used to take students to Cuba actually for about uh, three years. We did that when it was um, e when it wasn't Trump was le our leader, <laughs> the prior president. Yes. When it was easier to travel there. Yes. Um, yeah, and um, we we love these like seven to ten day trips. We usually do ten days, but okay. Perfect. How long does it usually take for jet lag? We used to take students to Peru, and I can't remember for Cusco how long. Maybe a day or so. Yes. I say well, yeah. similar altitude as Cusco. Okay. Yeah, I think they're a little bit higher up, just Cusco, not the rest yeah. of the room. Right, right. Yeah. Yes. So great. Yes, I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much. I'm sorry I couldn't see the whole thing, but I'm glad you taped it. Yes, That's I'll, great. I'll send it to you. I'll by, you can by ask me at any point. Jennifer, Thank you. you can I know, we'll be seeing a lot of each other. <laughs> I can show you on the videos. <laughs> I cannot wait. Yay. I need to get to Bolivia. I know. Oh. I'm like, that's on my, that's on my top of my list. Good. You'll love it. Oh, it yes, looks beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I really hope you can come. Hopefully this- Oh, me too. 
this situa COVID situation is gonna be over. Let's yeah, yeah. let's get it out. Yeah, <laughs> let's turn let's that corner. Uh, we I'm, have to. I'm so tired. Coming. Yeah, I know. I'm tired of it. <laughs> well, it's good to see you guys. Thank you guys so much. I hope Thank you have you a good so weekend. Much. Thank yeah, you, Jennifer. Have a great Jennifer. weekend. Thank you. Uh, we'll Jennifer, I'm gonna I'm gonna be emailing you so we can okay. meet maybe yes, next please. Week. Sounds yes. good. Yay. Perfect. Thank okay. you, Jennifer. All right, thanks guys. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, bye. bye. See you bye, later. Alejandra. See ya. Bye, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.